Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Today's video is a product review video. And yes, it's a small block Chevy, but it really just depends on what comes into the shop. So if you're a Ford guy or a Mopar guy, and you're like, how come you never do us? Well, the stuff has to come in for me to do a product review over. And this one just happened to come in. This one's been asked about several times from emails and asked if I have any flow numbers for this head. What head is this? Well, this is a Flowtech 220 CC head, and it is CNC ported fully, as you can kind of tell there. You can see some shadows in the port, obviously. But I happened to float on the flow bench, and I'll tell you all the flow numbers and how it did. So this is a 208 intake valve and a 1.6 1, 1 exhaust valve. And it, it, I measured it just as kind of C, and it, it looks fine. The measurements on the inside, as far as the throat, it's like 89%, the bull's 98%. Not too crazy. I'm going to flip around and show you the part I'm not a fan of. But I have to give Flowtech some credit. The Flowtech, by the way, as you can see it right there, they are a Chinese casting. But the casting itself actually looks really, really good. And the biggest thing I have to give them credit for is this is absolutely their design. Because of all the heads I see, and I see a ton of small block Chevy stuff, obviously. I haven't seen anything else that's quite like this. Patriot, so Pro Max, before they were Pro Max, they were Patriot. They had a head that was similar to this, but similar not the same pro max no longer even has that head so even though pro Ma patriot became pro max because a different owner they don't sell that head in at all any of the patriot heads at all so this one is absolutely flow design which is neat so it's not like they knocked off something um which is pretty unusual usually a chinese casting it's a knockoff of something else but um this is not so anyway very unusual in that fact and I was ha lucky enough to get the flow it. So the part here looks fine. The chambers are supposed to be 64 cc's. It didn't cc them. You can still see some shadowing on here. 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 Which looks like, the, I thought the piston had hit it, but that's just shadowing. Let me see if I can get a better view. You can kind of see it right there. You can also see some shadowing in the port, such as there and there. And that just might be core shift or, I mean, everybody blames core shift for this stuff, having a shadows. Sometimes it's your actual port when you did the design. So whenever you're, a little nut, bonus nugget of knowledge, whenever you're porting one of these that they have to digitize, typically you wanna make it a little bit bigger so that it cleans up everywhere. The catch is, some spots you're like, I don't wanna remove any more material there. You guys should have more material there. This is gonna make things worse, so that sort of thing. So that might be the case. It's not necessarily core shift, it probably could also be that you didn't make the initial design big enough. I don't know which way this one is because I don't know how bad the core was to begin with. All I'm seeing is a CNC one. I have no idea what it looked like as cast. So this part actually looks really, really well. This is the part I don't like. This is the part I don't like. And you might be like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm not a fan of this. I've never been a fan of this. See how thin this divider is between the two ports? That's thin, okay? Now, I've measured it, and I'm about to show you something in a minute to kind of give away with another reason why I'm not a fan of it. But that's, uh, I think it was 80 thou, or I think I, maybe a bit more. I have to remember off the top of my head, but between 80 and 100 thousandths. That's how thick that divider is. Which, like, that's plenty. It's going to seal. You're, abs you're absolutely correct Some, most times, but not all the time. So what I mean by that is you're going to, in order for you to actually take advantage of this because it's so thin here, there's no gasket that they make is that is that thin. None. No Felpro, no Mr. Gasket, nobody. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take a gasket and you're going to have to actually trim it to make it that size. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're putting on a, um, a gasket that just ends up being a restriction. The other part of that is if you really want to take advantage of it, you also have to port match the intake. Port matching that thin, it's, it's not impossible. It's just more difficult. Not a fan. The other thing is because it's so thin, let's say if you add boost or something to it, because it's only a hundred thousandths, it's more likely than having a thicker one to split. You might say, well, why did they, and I mean by split is it's gonna push the gasket over one way or the other. You might say it won't crack or nothing. It's got a hundred thousand, it's not gonna crack. So you might say, well, why did they do that then? Well, the reason has to do with the area at the pushrod pinch on a small block Chevy, our smallest area is at this pushrod pinch. See, our pushrods go through here, so if you measure the distance across, we'll just use this one's got light. Here, that's how wide it is. And from here, how tall it is. And that it gives us our minimum cross-sectional area, which is 
on a small block Chevy, low port is typically there. And that comes in at 2.2 inches, which is relatively small. So you might say the reason why they did that is because they can't move this wall over because it's gonna break through where the push rod goes through and that's no good, obviously. So they need to move this wall over. I get that, you're gonna get more area there. You know, there's another direction you could go and that is down. So if I look at this, they've already got it raised up pretty good because look how much space it is here. So essentially what they've done is they raised this port up as high as they could and then just did this. But look, if you look at the port here, it comes this way and starts from this point, it's raising up the whole way. So what you could do, like what Brodix does on many of their, like the Dragon Slayers and even Profiler, it comes in flat here, then starts after the push rod pinch starts coming up to give a bigger short side. The reason for that is it gives more area at the cross at the push rod pinch instead of making it that way. Okay, so there's a point. I understand why they did that, but it'd been better if you drop this and give them a little bit more material here. And here's the other thing. Watch this. This is my little calipers. I'm gonna show you this. So I'm putting it in the port. This right here is the push rod pinch. I'm measuring 145 thousandths. Watch this. See how it's getting less and less and less and less and less till it's right about there. A little bit further, I'm about to fall out. I'm gonna be at 100 thou. So this is 114, 113, about 100 thousandths right at the end. But look, this is the pinch. You're 130, 130. You're like, so what? You're actually making it bigger where it needs to be smaller. So in other words, you have more area here at the opening than you do at the pinch. So what you should have done is take that, if you're like 130, fine, that should have carried all the way. There's no reason for it to be thin here than essentially you're going this direction. That's what they've done. You should have gone straight. So move it over, 30 thou on each side, and you'd have had a straight wall at the, and have the same area at the push rod pinch that you do now. That doesn't make any sense to me to be done. And if you also notice, you could have dropped the port down. I mean, even if I would, you don't have to necessarily drop this down, but this part right here, this is where the pinch is right here, where my finger is, move that down, flatten this, and you would have got the same area. Would it affect flow? Absolutely not. It won't have anything to do with flow at all. If you gain one or two CFMs, either way, it's a miracle. But you do make more power because you've got more area at the pinch to support it. So there you go. Especially on a 220cc head. Look, this thing isn't gonna be turning a whole lot of RPM anyway with that size of a head. So move this over, give you more space here between, better for the gasket to seal up. Customer's not gonna complain about the gasket. He's gonna now gonna have to trim and hopefully he can trim it because that's hard trimming in between the ears because if you have any gasket, you know what I'm talking about. As soon as you start cutting this side, it's flipping over on this one. It's not easy. So anyway, you're gonna complain about that. You'd fix so much of your problems if you just moved it over the 30 thou on each side. That's a total of 60 thousandths wider, probably about the same thickness as the gasket. And you have the same cross section you have at the pinch now. And actually, whenever you do your measurements, because you moved it over this much, you probably would lose, it would have less volume in the runner. So you'd be like, look, I flow this good with now a 215cc head instead of a 220cc head. That's why you don't use cc's, by the way. Point being is, that's the one thing I don't like. Here are the exhaust ports. And they're not bad. Typical. But what's all this mean? Can you just share the flow numbers? Sure, here you go. Floated on the signs, digital 680 bench, 4155 bore, and no exhaust pipe. It's not good. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not great. The numbers I care most about are four, six, and peak. So if we look at four, 234, that's pretty low. And in fairness, it didn't have a back cut on the intake valve. So what's that mean? When you don't have a back cut on the intake valve, you have more peak flow, but you lose low lift flow. And I don't care about one, two, and even three. These numbers are, somewhat worthless. Three is kind of getting there, but not really. 400 is the one that's gonna tell you quite a bit. If you, in my experience, and I've done a lot of heads for a long time, if you have a good number of 400, that, that dude's gonna run. 600 is the other one, and then peak. So if this is bad, the head can still almost make up with it if you got really great six and 100 inch numbers, but you better have like a 750 lift cam. But if the 400 number's bad and you only got a 650 lift, then isn't as good as it could be. So 234 is not that great, hence you need a back cut. Had it had a back cut, it might've been 240s. At 600, it's 286. And that's okay. 
in all fairness, this is 220 cc's and I'm not knocking Flowtech like, at all because at least it's their own design and they didn't steal it from anybody. But if you do the Promax Project X215 and ASCAS, they hadn't even CNC ported, it's 290s. So it's it's better than this CNC ported one. That's why I hate when people are like, CNC ported so much better. It CNC ported just means they copied something. So if they copied a piece of crap, it's a piece of crap. Um, not saying this is a piece of crap, but point being is this only did 286. And then peak is 289, so you can call it 290. That's it at 700. Exhaust, uh, it was pretty good though. Exhaust really is good. You got 181 at four, that's a great number there. And it peaks about 215. So pretty good number, and that's without exhaust pipe. So that's a really fair number. Things that could help this easily if you just put a back cut on the valve. That would have helped out that one. As far as the 600 number, probably wouldn't have changed that at all. It would have remained the same. The 700 number would have probably lost two. So from going from 289.8, we can say 290, it probably have been 288. So anyway, uh, I know it seems like every time I talk about a head, I'm giving negatives. It just, that's, I think it's human nature. We always go to try to go to the negative things. But as far as power production, I think it would be a pretty good power production head. And I think it's going to work relatively well on most stuff. So we have to pick this up real cheap. Don't throw them away. Um, they're definitely worth, they're definitely a good head to have. They're better than many of the stuff that's out there. I'd say they're better than probably 70% of the heads, small block Chevy heads that's out here. But you, there's no way you could compare those to things to say, like even though they're 220 cc's, if you had an AFR 220 cc head here, even the race port one, they're not even in the same league. But so, but at least it's their own design. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman, I do not port cast iron heads, and you guys take care.